Hello, welcome to Dumb Girls Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today, we're reviewing a movie I love. It's an indie movie from 2011, uh, which is directed by the Trost brothers, Jason Trost and Brandon Trost, who Jason Trost is an actor slash stuntman, and his brother, Brandon Trost, is like a, a DP or director of photography, and he also does visual effects, right? Which he was working in the industry for a long time, and uh, well, for a while, and like, they came together and decided to make a movie back in 2011, right? And I first heard about this film thanks to Spill.com. They did a review of it. And uh, they did a review of it because it was uh, one of the first movies that Alamo Draft House, which is a famous movie theater from Austin, Texas, first uh, put out when they tried to, when they first tried to do uh, distri- dis- distribu- uh, distribution, right? And also uh, Jason Blum from Blumhouse. <laughs> is also one of the executive producers from this film. So the film stars Jason Tross as Jatro, Brandon Barrera as Beatro, Lee Val Massey as LWE, James DeBello as Beatbox Bust the Bill, James Ramar, uh, who, who's the narrator, Art Sue as Casey DC. Art Sue you'll know from uh, the second Crank film, right? Which the one of the crank one of the crank uh, directors is in the another Jason Tross movie, um, uh, All Superheroes Must Die, which we're gonna review soon. Uh, Nick Prince Prince uh, Principal as VLT, Sean Whalen as Stacy's dad, Caitlin Foley as Stacy, Captain Colin Juniors uh, plays a uh, drug dealer. And uh, Dull Charlenbach Tr- as Triple Decca 1K. That's pretty much Natalie Minx as Macy. Who's that? Is she like she looks like a porn star. Fuck, fuck. Oh, uh, I have no idea. So the film is basically about. Well, I think it's a supposed to be implied that this is the post-apocalypse <laughs> uh, right where the, the the movie is called the the FP because it stands for Fraser Park right and I should mention this is a very low budget movie uh, it is like I think it like I heard back in the day like this movie costs like 60 grand to make. <laughs> but because you have like a talented uh, et, uh like uh, director of uh, photography as the director the movie does not visually it does not look cheap but like the setting the, the sets and the costumes do but I love the costumes the costumes are like are like uh, basically like it looks like a bunch of people just shop at like a fresh a thrift store <laughs> which they probably did, uh, did. <laughs> Which, like, because, like, everybody's dressed like, um, 80s, 80s and 90s hip-hop, <laughs> right? Because, you know, like, a lot of the people in the film are, uh, uh, basically, like, white trash, white trash, like, you know, wiggers, pretty much. <laughs> uh, like, you know, like, uh, insane clown posse, like, kind of, like, people, right? <laughs> Which is what I love about the film. So the movie is about like it's set in like a small California town where two rival gangs battle for control of their turf. The Eva uh, Dance Dance Revolution like game called Beat Beat Revelations, which they 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 uh, called it Beat Beat Revolution in the Google uh, the Google. Uh, a description which is not it's called revelations bp revelations uh, which they couldn't get the the rights to like uh uh to obviously to ddr which fuck man who, who, who hasn't played ddr so like the fir- the the scene which you can watch the first 10 minutes uh on youtube for free right which they put they put it up like when the movie uh first came out to get people interested in it where you, 
where it starts off with uh, Jatro and his brother Beatro, who's not played by Brandon Tross, by the way, it's played, played by an actual actor called Brandon Barrera, are about to uh, have their match with LWE, who is like a rival gang, the leader of a r rival gang. And LWE is probably, if you ask a lot of people who their favorite character uh, of is in this movie, most people are going to say probably either LWE or KCDC, right? Which LWE is a great villain. Like, um, Beatro goes to have his match with, like, with LWE, and, like, L L the, the first thing LWE uh, says to him, it's like, Beatro, what are you dressed up for Halloween, a bitch? <laughs> He's, like, way over the top, a little, like, gangster in the, in the film, who has a lot of memorable lo lines <laughs> in the film, right? Right, which, like, you can almost play a drinking game, where like every time somebody says bitch you, you take a shot and you will probably get alcohol poison <laughs> cuz like they use the b word a lot so the film starts off with LWE and Beatro having a match of uh, DDR but it's called BB Revelations right and the music in the in the movie is good but there's not a lot of songs so they reuse like songs a lot but overall i thought like the music was good it's very reminiscent of ddr right so they they have their match and then B Beatro loses and di and just dies <laughs> he gets 137 <laughs> right which is uh which i have no idea what it means but like it means you like you got you got fucked up bitch <laughs> uh he dies, and then Jatro decides to never play uh, Beat Beat Revelations again. He runs away, right? So, like, he start he becomes a logger. Uh, Casey DC go uh, goes to find him, who's a, a part of uh, Beatro and Jatro's gang. Uh, go goes to find Jatro and tells him, "Hey, man, the the Fraser Park is in trouble. We need your help to save it." Uh, all. Uh, L L double E controls all the liquor, and because he controls all the liquor, the bums can't get booze anymore. So the bums become straight edge, and because they're straight edge, they don't get drunk and feed the ducks all day. And because nobody feeds the ducks, the ducks le uh, left the town. What kind of town does don't have no ducks, man? That's fucked up, <laughs> right? So J Choke. Uh, uh, go, goes back to like you know join the gang which is just Casey DC and BLT who's like the mystical like uh, mentor character who trains J Cho to become uh, beat beat revelations champion right and uh, across the street where they all live right which J Cho because he doesn't have street credit anymore because he left town has to live in a tent <laughs> <laughs> has to live in a tent, right? So they, they they all live at the same house, right? And across the street is where Stacy live lives, who's like J Tro's crush in the film, and his love interest, right? Who is dating L W E because you know he controls the liquor, and she has an abusive, uh, drunken father played by Sean Whalen, who constantly abuses her and like yells at her, which you never see his face until like until his uh one scene in the film where he where you where you see uh where jaycho decides uh he, he can't he, he can't stand anymore stand uh and, and anymore and goes to save uh stacy from her drunken father and it's revealed that stacy's dad is a, is a fucking cross dresser <laughs> it's a cross dresser who has like electrified like bad like a uh, tennis racket that he used that he uses to beat J, uh, J Tro, <laughs> right? Which J Tro fucks him up because obviously he's a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, how it is, right? He beats him up and saves Stacy, but you know the the only way he can keep Stacy if he beats L W E, right? And uh, they have, uh, but before he can have his match with L W E, he has to earn some street cred, right? So he, um, he. 
they have a match with this other uh, gang called the Triple, like the One Ks, whose leader is Triple Decca, who's this Russian dude who's obviously gay and has a thing for Jatro, uh, who, uh, wa- who's addicted to black dick ecstasy, <laughs> which is just a black tablet of ecstasy, <laughs> which I thought that joke was fu- uh, funny, right? Um, they, they have, like, uh, uh, before the final match, BLT equips the gang with Gats, and the Gats are, uh, two revolvers and a slingshot, (laughs) and they gave the Asian dude, KCDC, the slingshot, (laughs) which you have this, like, shootout with, like, L- after Jatro wins his match with uh, LWE, you have like a, a really cool, uh, funny shootout with the Jatro's gang and LWE, and it's very reminiscent of the shootouts from Trailer Park, where they're like shooting at each other super intense, but like nobody's hitting anything. <laughs> nobody's hitting anyone, which even in Trailer Park Boys, like. Someone eventually would get hit, right? But, like, nobody would die. So it's very reminiscent of that. And uh, the... the How they handle the gunfire, it's, like, obviously, like, CGI special effects, right? Because at one point, the dude, like, one of the dudes has, like, a shotgun and shoots, like, uh... (laughs) Shoots, like, a toilet. Like, because there's, like, random shit, like, all over the place. And, And these, like, you know... And these sets, right? Because it's, they want to give it like a post-apocalyptic kind of feel. So there's like random shit. People have like crazy costumes. You got like chicks, uh, chicks with their dan- dancing with their titties out. You, uh, chicks like dancing on stripper poles, wearing like uh, masks and shit <laughs> behind like you know uh, fences, right? Um, uh, I, I I really love the film. The film is. Just a crazy, a crazy over the top film with like, you know, that like kind of celebrates like low class culture, like urban culture and like right white trash stuff. So if you're a fan of Insane Clown Posse and you're a fan of like, you know, like um, rap culture, like, you know, like urban culture, like stuff like that, redneck culture, you'll probably love this film. Right, and they have they say the n word in the film a few times, but it's never in a negative uh, tone. It's always in positive tone, except for well, sometimes it's not. But like, but usually it, it like the n word is an acronym in the film for never ignorant and getting goals accomplished, <laughs> which is like fucking uh, amazing. And like the also the like. Uh, the main character has these boots, which look like fucking, like, ski shoes. Not ski shoes, but, like, you know. Like, they're, like, they're basically the fucking, uh, what is it, like, uh, the moon boots from, like, you know, the, that Michael Jackson would wear, but blue. And they call it the N-word boots. <laughs> and it's supposed to be, like, really cool. That, uh, helps, uh, j uh, beat beat Revelation better, right? Which, I love the, I gotta say, like, Love is a Dream is probably a great song in the film, but the last song in the film that plays in the credits is fucking amazing. It's basically like a fake, like, Japanese sounding song, which very reminiscent of, like, uh, some, like, DDR songs, like, uh, like, uh, Smile ITK or whatever that band was called, which was basically a Swedish pop band that would that would like you know make music that sounded very japanese uh sounding right they did that uh one song uh butterfly i i'm a little butterfly like looking for a samurai or some shit you, you probably heard the song right um i i i i am your little butterfly green black and blue like the colors in the sky that, that that song right if you ever heard of it which the uh which die ant word did like a song that was kind of homage to that song <laughs> oh what the fuck was that song called 
Man, I got. I also love Die Antwoord. <laughs> so, it, also, if you're a fan of Die Antwoord, you would probably love this this movie too. Right. But I, I gotta say, I love this film, and I also there's like a the movie uh, has some '80s like nostalgia stuff in it. There's like mont there's training montages. There there's like the movie like you know how like a lot of '80s movies would end. With the guy kissing the girl during the sunrise or sunset. Here, it's the guy getting blown by the girl <laughs> while the sun rises. <laughs> and it's fucking amazing, amazing final scene, right? Which I just found out recently, I think yesterday, that they actually, while looking for uh, All Superheroes Must Die, because I forgot the name of the title, uh, I found out that they made a sequel. To like the FP in 2018 and it's for you can watch it for free on Jason Tross's like YouTube channel and there's going to be a third one which the second FP is called the uh, FP2 Beats of Rage <laughs> uh, which man I can't wait to see that film so we're gonna review that so if I were to give this m movie a rating I would say it, the movie, despite being a low budget comedy, is it, it might when I first watched it, and I wasn't the only one that had this opinion. We all thought that this film would be an instant cult classic, and to me, it is. I'm giving it eight out of ten, and uh, I would say what watch some trailers for the film and to decide for yourself if you want to watch it. But I I think this is. This is an awesome movie, and I'm hoping that the sequels they didn't like, you know, uh, pull their punches with the comedy, right? Because uh, uh, I know like this film got some criticism back in the day with the N word, right? Yeah, so like I don't know, I'm done with this review, guys. The next uh, movie review after this is probably going to be. Uh, uh, Jeepers Creepers 2 and then we'll, we'll, we'll review All Superheroes Must Die which is a superhero film directed and starring Jason Tross which also has a sequel. Alright guys, peace.